Hi guys, I'm Lara. Welcome back to History of Fashion. Today we have a brand new episode of History of Fashion, the 1980s. <laughs> The 1980s were wild, excessive, and wacky. Greed is good. This was the catchphrase of 1980s. And if you remember the film of Michael Douglas, Wall Street from 1987, it was all about greed. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. In this decade, people were obsessed with money. This obsession with money reflected in fashion. The key word of the 1980s was excess. You couldn't have too many feathers, too much makeup, too many jewelry, too many clothes, too many furs, too many diamonds. Your hair could never be too big. Material Girl by Madonna was a hit in this decade obsessed with money because it reflected exactly what people wanted to hear, see and feel. If you remember the clip, you can see that she copies Marilyn Monroe in Diamonds are a girl's best friend because in the 1980s diamonds were a girl's best friend. Everything was about excess and about color. People loved colors. Colors were everywhere. There was a burst of color. Women loved to express an image of wealth and success. And it didn't matter if you had or if you hadn't money. You needed to show that you have money. You needed to have this image of wealth, of success to, you know, to fit in. Women express this wealth through very shiny costumes, through diamonds, pearls, large four gold earrings, pearl necklaces, and clothing covered with sequins and diamonds. But there is always a need for rebellion. So punk fashion was again in the spotlight. Although it began as a reaction to the hippie movement, it was so present in the 1980s as a reaction to this materialism that was taking over the world. Another great thing of the 1980s was that people began to feel very aware of their bodies. That's why another hit of the 1980s is Olivia Newton-John's Let's Get Physical. And Dirty Dancing was another hit film of the 1980s. This kind of trend reflected in fashion as well because people started to wear leggings, headbands and all sorts of casual chic sport outfits. This excess reflected in designs and in the silhouettes because everything got bigger and bigger and bigger. The bigger, the better. Another trend, a big trend, was the power dressing. Women started to wear men's suits. And a great designer who noticed that was Donna Karen. She made power dressing more feminine, more softer and wearable. It was all about empowerment. This trend was, was linked completely to the 1940s trend and the 1940s need of empowerment. TV launched in the 1980s. A style icon of this decade was definitely Madonna. She started to wear what she was seeing in the streets of New York and in the clubs of New York. She made music videos in them. So you can imagine that all the young people all over the world went crazy about that style. Best thing about her is that she kept reinventing herself. So she didn't stop with just one style, she always looked for more. She always looked for improvement. Every year she had something new. She kind of opened the scene for female singers and for female artists of today. Yoji Yamamoto and Rei Kawakubo were the designers that brought black back into spotlight. In a decade where people were obsessed with color, they made all their fashion black. 
people wanted that because black equals rock and roll, equals cool, equal wild, bad, rebel, and against mainstream, against that greedy and superficial lifestyle. Thank you guys for watching. You are amazing. You are the best. Thank you. Greed, greed is good. <laughs> ah, bleh. and we are back with a brand new episode of History of Fashion. Go ahead. Gotta see things, see new places, and brand new things. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to 